pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for its advancement, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. In compliance with NJSA 10 column four, the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this duly and regularly scheduled meeting of the Jackson Township Planning Board has been published and posted in all appropriate locations. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. B uh, Mr. Bressy? Mr. Bressy is not here. Uh, Mr. Bristine? Here. Mr. Fleming? Here. Mr. Herring? Here. Mr. Riker? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. Mr. Marzo? Here. Mr. Heller? Here. Mr. Wall? Dr. Campbell? Mr. Herman. Here. Thank you. Uh, for the minutes for tonight, uh, the May 1st, 2023 minutes were sent out. Does anyone have any objections? Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll uh, make the motion to approve the minutes as written. Have a roll call, Second. Please? Have a roll call, please. Eligible to vote, Mr. Bernstein? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Mr. Herring? <laughs> Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Marzo? Mr. Heller? Yes. Mr. Herman? Yes, thank you. Thank no. you. For tonight, we have a resolution. Sarah? Resolution number 202307, resolution of the planning board of the Township of Jackson, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, granting preliminary and final major site plan approval for Bias Yakov Incorporation, Block 15601, Lots 2 and 6, and Blocks 15701, Lots 15. Eligible to vote. Mr. Bressy, Mr. Bernstein, Mr. Um, Bressy, I'm sorry, is um, not attending the meeting. Mr. Bernstein, Mr. Fleming, Mr. Herring, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Marzo, Mr. Heller, and Mr. Herman. Thank you. May I please have a motion? May I have a motion? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Bernstein? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Mr. Herring? Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Marzo? Yes. Mr. Heller? Yes. Mr. Herman. Yes, thank you. Now to jump right into our applications. The first application for tonight, we have block 7310, lot one, 2111 Discovery Way, LLC. Mr. Klee, would you like to uh, get us started tonight? Um, thank you. Sure, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, application for preliminary and final major site plan. Um, the applicant is proposing construction of a 6,000 square foot two-story office building in a jug handle area adjacent to West County Line and Brewers Bridge Road. But there's an existing gas station that's going to be um, removed in, um, in conjunction with um, the development that's proposed. Um, Mr. Peters raised the question as far as the environmental issues, if um, the, uh, the uh, gas station facility is properly closed, if appropriate permits have been um, 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 gotten. And um, we should have some testimony from the applicant regarding those environmental issues. The Environmental Commission has indicated no concerns as of March 23rd, 2023, but I think the biggest issue is the closure of the, uh, of the gas station. There are um, several existing condition variances relating to the um, dimensions and configuration of the lot. Uh, there is also uh, four new variances that are created, which we should have some testimony from the applicant in support of. Um, it's like, as I indicated, it's in the middle of a, a jug handle. So residential buffering is not really an issue. Um, we provided some technical revisions to the applicant. Um, the parking complies. That's all at this time. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our office has a report dated April 28th of this year. Um, this is a permitted use in the zone. Um, it's not a conditional use, it's a permitted use. Um, we note that there are some existing variance conditions given the the odd shape of the lot and the idea that it's within an off-ramp for County Line Road at the intersection with the traffic light. So we'd ask the applicant to provide some testimony about how we got to the variance conditions. Um, and lastly, we'd like some testimony about the access points to both County Line Road and Brewers Bridge, whose jurisdiction are over. Um, who has responsibility for them so we can make sure we have an understanding of which way cars are going to enter and leave newly constructed site. Thank you. Thank you. Before I turn it over to Ms. Jennings, I just I need a motion for the voucher for the recording secretary for the June 5th meeting. I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. 
Ms. Jennings. Thank you. Good evening. For the record, I'm Donna Jennings from the law firm of Olin Schoolman and Spitzer on behalf of the applicant. As the board's consultants correctly indicated, the applicant is here this evening seeking preliminary and final major site plan approval and several bulk variances to construct a two-story, approximately 6,000 square foot professional office building on property located at 2100 West County Line Road and identified as lot one in block 7310 on the township's tax map. The subject property is located in the neighborhood commercial zone where the proposed office building is a permitted use. In addition to site plan approval, the applicant seeks seven bulk variances as follows. One minimum lot area where 45,000 square feet is required and 29,930 square feet exists and 29,425 uh, square feet is proposed. Minimum lot frontage from Brewers Bridge Road where 200 feet is required, 130 feet exists and 117 feet is proposed. Minimum lot depth where 200 feet is required, approximately 130 feet exists and approximately 117 feet is proposed. Minimum front yard setback from West County Line Road where 60 feet is required and approximately 65 feet exists and 33 and a half feet is proposed. Minimum front yard setback from Brewers Bridge where 60 feet is required, 42 feet exists and approximately 37 feet is proposed. Uh, to permit an accessory refuse enclosure within the front yard where accessory structures are prohibited and the minimum parking area setback from Ocean County turn slot where 20 feet is required and 10 feet is proposed. The record will show that due to the unique triangular shape of the lot, as well as the fact that the property has three street frontages along Brewers Bridge Road, County Road, and the drug handle, and the proposed dedication to the county for intersection improvements, the applicant's entitled to a C1 hardship variance. The location of the property also prevents the applicant from being able to purchase neighboring lots to mitigate any of the need for the variances. This application also advances several purposes of the municipal land use law, satisfying the C2 criteria. Specifically, the proposed use will advance the following purposes of the MLUL, the promotion of the general welfare, the promotion of a more desirable visual environment, and the more efficient use of land. Finally, the record will show that the proposal also satisfies a negative criteria, that is that the relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the zone plan and zoning ordinance. Simply put, the site currently contains an existing dilapidated gas station that is nothing short of an eyesore. The site will be completely redeveloped with a brand new, visually pleasing office building with associated improvements, including landscaping, lighting, curbing, and delineated parking. In support of the development proposal, the applicant will call on the following four witnesses. Mike Intel, the professional engineer, Melissa Mermelstein, the licensed architect, John Ray, the traffic engineer, and Christine Nazaro Cofone, the professional planner. As a matter of record keeping, the applicant is in receipt of the following reports. The Jackson Bureau Fire Safety dated March 23rd, 2023. Jackson Police dated April 12th, 2023. The Board Planners Report dated April 28th, 2023. The Board Engineer Report dated May 18th, 2023. And the Township Forces Report dated June 1st, 2023. With that, we'd like to call up our first witness, the site engineer, have him sworn in, and we can begin our testimony. Thank you. Please, please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony, information, questions, or comments presented before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Please state your name, spell your last, and your Ma credentials, please. Michael B. Intilli, I N T I L E. I'm a professional engineer and planner in the state of New Jersey since 1990. I'm a principal with Crest Engineering Associates uh, in Millstone and Tom's River, and uh, prepared subdivision site plans for. Uh, residential, commercial, industrial properties for approximately 25 years presented to this board and other boards and mostly at Ocean Monmouth Middlesex. Thank you. We accept your credentials. Thank you. And, and you you'll be um, testifying as to an engineer, right? Yes, well, correct. Well, yes. Engineer. Thank you. And if you could, Mike, uh, just for the record, the so site plans were prepared under your direction? Yes. And if you could describe the existing site conditions, uh, and if you're going to refer to any exhibits, uh, just identify them for the record, please. Yes, uh, if we could refer to A3, existing conditions, Mike. Uh, 
Our site's located, as mentioned, on three frontages. We are fronting on County Line Road, uh, Brewers Bridge Road, and in the back along the east side, it's the turning slot for Ocean County uh, Line Road. Um, we are in the highway commercial zone, uh, 0.69 acres in total size. On-site existing, as mentioned, was a dilapidated gas station, basically a, a one-story frame masonry structure. There's a canopy associated with the gas station out front, and the gas pumps uh, have been removed. The tanks, I believe, have been removed. Uh, there's some white pine trees along the turning slot in the back. Uh, there are three entrances, uh, and we'll when we present on the A1, which is the rendering, you'll see that we're controlling those now. There is three entrances, exits onto uh, County Line Road, kind of uncontrolled there. Two are close to the intersection, one is a little farther back, and then there's one on Brewers Bridge Road. Um, surrounding us are highway commercial zone properties and developed properties. Uh, and when we look at uh, the next rendering, I'll go, uh, Ariel, excuse me, I'll go through those. Um, the site topography runs from east to west, so the turning slot and then slopes down to the intersection. Uh, there's significant infrastructure, as you might imagine, at that intersection. There's a 36-inch RCP. We'll be uh, tying into that with our storm system. So this is the aerial A2. Um, it shows our site bounded in red. Again, we're at the corner of County Line and Brewers Bridge. You can see the turning slot off to the east on the right side. Surrounding us there is a large uh, commercial development, shopping mall. Across the street is a Rita's ice cream and a pizza parlor. At the corner, on the southeast corner, would be uh, Wells Fargo Bank. And then there's offices, medical offices across the street from us on Brewers Bridge and some retail. And if you could describe what the applicant proposes, please. That would be A1, please. This is a rendering of our site plan. Um, and um, it shows that we're proposing a 6,000 square foot, two-story professional office building. There's two suites on each floor, four suites total. Um, we're showing a 30 car parking lot is proposed. There's one EV space proposed and two handicap proposed. I mentioned controlling the uh, ingress and egress. We are now proposing two right in, right out only uh, entrance exits to the site. One you can see there on County Line and then on Brewers Bridge. Um, the other improvements associated with site plan would be uh, lighting and landscaping, stormwater management. I'll go through those. Uh, we also have a sewer connection lateral to the turning slot where the sewer is currently out the back of the site to the east. And then along Brewers Bridge, we're connecting to the water system. The lighting uh, we're proposing is a 20 foot high uh, LED uh, shoebox type fixtures. There's three of them um, located one near the uh, exit on Brewers Bridge, one basically in the center of the site, and then one near County Line. The uh, landscaping proposed is significant, as you can see on the rendering. We're proposing sunset maples and pin oaks along. Um, the county line road, deciduous trees there. There's uh, willow oaks along the back turning slot and some London plane trees also there. Intermixed with that are foundation plantings and some significant intermittent, intermittent to that uh, is some foundation plantings. Yes, sorry, foundation plantings and some significant uh, perennials and so forth to beautify the site. The uh, stormwater management, uh, this is a, uh, a site where we're actually reducing the square footage of the pervious area uh, by 5,600 square feet. Uh, it's not uh, required to have stormwater management on the site. We are proposing it in the, in the best management practices uh, vein of utilizing forest pavement, which will be in the parking area on the east side in the back away from the building next to the refuse and on the other side of the refuse, uh, the same will be porous pavement. We're also collecting the stormwater from the roof areas and tying that into an underground system that's proposed there. So uh, again, not required. This is a site that's uh, 
would be required if it was a major project, which is 0.25 acres of added impervious area. And as I mentioned, we're less than the impervious area that's on site now. So we're not required to have that. The county did ask us to retain some drainage. It is in their report, so we did that as well. Um, so we ended up with that system. Other than that, you can see that the site was mentioned is, uh, is a unique site. Um, it's driving the variance conditions. The, the variances uh, for setback are 60 feet required from both sides. To the court, bear with me. And 30, 33.8 feet on County Line Road and 36.7 feet to the building on Gruick Bridge. The other variances required uh, were mentioned. Uh, I'll go through them. The lot front is again 200 foot required, 117.84 feet on Brewers Bridge proposed. Lot depth is uh, meeting the requirement, excuse me, is a variance as well. Uh, 200 feet required, 117.84 feet provided. The uh, third one is the front setback. I mentioned 60 feet again required from county line was 33.8 feet. And uh, from Brewers Bridge to front setback, 60 feet again, 36.7 feet is what we're proposing. The other setback variances for the accessory structure, again, required because of the three frontages and the size of the property relative to the frontages um, and location is eight feet is proposed to the refuse, the back of the refuse where 60 feet is, is required by ordinance. And the last one at 20 feet required would be the parking offset and we're proposing 10 feet. And again, those are back uh, on the east side of the property by the turning slot. And then just um, one more with respect to the minimum lot area, it currently doesn't uh, meet the ordinance requirement. And then it's actually reduced slightly because the county has asked for a small portion at the intersection. Is that correct? That's correct. They're asking for a small intersection a dedication and then we're providing, I should mention, an easement of 10 feet along um, the county line road as well. No dedications proposed for Brewers Bridge Road, which is a municipal road. Okay, and if you could just discuss parking and circulation. I mentioned the 30 car parking lot, one space for EV and two for handicap. I mentioned the um, ingress and egress will be li uh, limited to right in, right out for both county line and Brewers Bridge Road. Um, I think you'll hear testimony that the circulation uh, comports with standard design for this type of parking lot, for a double loaded parking lot, and works well with, uh, with the, the size of the building and the site itself. And would it be your opinion that the access along West County Line Road is better than what exists there today where there's a large open driveway? Yes, when you have, obviously, when you have driveway openings near an intersection like that, you want to move them away, which is what you see there all the way to the southeast and uh, likewise on Rose Bridge. And you've had an opportunity to review the consultant's reports? Yes. And is there any um, issues or anything that you want to raise that the applicant cannot comply with or is the applicant willing to comply the with May all the 18th, comments? Uh, excuse me, the May 18th, 23 report, I want a little, uh, we have no issues with anything in that report and we'll comply. What about the other reports, the fire report? Yes, we'll comply. The, the only issue I had in the, it was the fire report uh, was asking for two hydrants on this site. Seemed like a lot to me, but um, I'd like to follow up with, uh, with that report a little bit. Um, but as far as all the other reports, the tree, um, shade tree report, the fire safety report, um, so forth and so on, uh, we accept that and we'll make the changes as required in those letters, as well as the county uh, pre-approval. County pre-approval, their review, the conditioned approval. So just to be clear, which letter do you want to respond back to? It's got to be the fire bureau. It's, yeah, it's Jackson Fire Bureau, Fire Safety District 3, March 23rd, 23, where he's indicating uh, one hydrant meeting Jackson MUA specification shall be installed at the west side of the entrance. And second hydrant meeting Jackson specification shall be installed on the west corner of the north entrance. So I'm not quite sure why that is, but can I interject here, please? The, the departments for that corner come from two different directions. And with a divided highway, there's no there's no specificity of who's going to get there first. And you have trucks coming from the east side of county line 
and you're going to have trucks coming from both sides of Rose Bridge. All right. Well, that, that's a good point. I did look back at my client, and he has no problem putting both fire hydrants in. Thank you. Thank you for that. I knew that had to be a reason. That's all the direct questions I have for this witness. Mr. Klee, would you like to interject? Um, really just one. Non-medical? Your business office? There's no medical. Professional medical. office, correct. Correct, non-medical. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Peters, would you Nothing to prevent somebody. I'm sorry. To prevent somebody from using this as a faster drug handle, um, are you guys open to a speed bump or a uh, a table of some measure? You mean on site? On the site or near one of uh, the exits. Uh, up on uh, Brewer's Bridge. Yeah, we can work with uh, the site engineer, the okay. board engineer for that. It's going to come down to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, your drainage and whatnot. I don't want to start something ponding, but I can just see, you know, the theatrics of somebody cutting through there. No, I get it. You don't want to wait at the light. You want to find a quicker way to Absolutely. round it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, a it's exactly what I would do. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't admit to that. <laughs> Thank you. I know we'll work with your board engineer to find a suitable uh, spot for some type of a speed bump or other uh, yeah. slowing a car vehicle down. Mess up your with the absence of Dr. Campbell here, I don't think you'll get away without answering the EV question and the solar question. Yeah, so I think we do address the EV question. We do have EV uh, space in compliance, and I do not believe my client is looking to do uh, solar, no. I honestly don't think it's really, it's kind of a small building. Sure. You're not going to get anything out of it. We have to ask. That's one of the ways it's portable. Anybody else? Okay, next witness. Yep, thank you. If I could now uh, call up our architect, Melissa Mermelstein. Good evening. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm that the testimony, information, questions, or comments you present before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please state your name, spell your last, and your credentials, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Melissa Mermelstein, M-E-R-M-E-L-S-T-E-I-N. I'm a graduate of the City College of New York Spitzer School of Architecture. I'm a licensed in the state of New Jersey and have appeared before this and other municipal boards. Um, the drawings presented tonight were prepared under my supervision. Thank you. We accept your credit. Credentials may proceed. Thank you. Um, just for the record, the floor plans and elevations were prepared by your office. That's correct. And if you could describe the proposal, and if you're going to reference any exhibits, can you just please identify them for the record? Sure. Anthony, if I could trouble you to please pull up A6. Thank you. Um, we're proposing a 6,000 square foot slab on grade office building, um, two-story office building, 3,000 square feet per floor, um, divided into two office suites each. Suite 101 um, is 1,006 square feet. Suite 102 is 1,306. 201 is 1,425. And 202 is 1,072. Um, the board should note that being that there is no current tenants, um, the sizes are subject to some flexibility. Um, the roof can be accessed through a ladder um, and hatch um, on the second floor. Um, we are proposing some roof mounted HVAC equipment, but I've also allocated space at grade for other um, units if needed. Um, Anthony, if we can go to, P, um, to A7, please. Um, we're proposing a 30 foot, um, 30 feet to the top of the roof um, with another four foot six parapet. 
um, 15 feet from first floor to second and another 15 from second to top of roof. Um, and if we can go to A8, please. Um, we approach the exterior design of this building in a 360 degree manner um, with its position being visible both from the street side and the parking lot side. Um, we applied a similar architectural language um, on all four faces of the building. Um, we're proposing a palette of stucco, glazing, paneling, and wood look trim um, to give a variety of texture to the building. And we believe this proposal will be a great addition to the community. So if you just hold on one second, please note, note the record. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Wool walked in at 726. Thank you. Proceed. I believe that's all your direct testimony, correct? That's right. Thank you. Mr. Peters. Um, there's no real reason, I'm sorry to our missing board member's point, there's no practical reason we can't put solar on top of the building, correct? So um, because we're proposing some roof mounted HVAC and the 3,000 square foot footprint, um, our client has consulted with a solar um, technician, sorry, a solar installation company who advised that there's not a lot of square footage that would be left over for access to the HVAC units and solar panels. So at this point, we're not proposing solar on the roof. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is there an elevator? Um, so there's no elevator proposed in this building. Um, the reason being that um, per building code, um, this is categorized as a small building, less than 10,000 square feet and two stories. Um, building code does not require an elevator for a building this size and of this use. So how does someone who might be handicapped get to the second floor? It's a good question. Um, unfortunately, because building code does not mandate it, and this is the New Jersey you know, addition that was adopted, um, you know, neither myself nor, you know, this is the this is the method that the township would approve this building. And so there's no uh, mechanism to mandate an elevator in this building. So how is that ADA compliant? Um, per building code, it is ADA compliant. A building of this size and this nature with this use is not required to have an elevator. Um, how how tall is the is the building? Um, Thirty feet to the top of the roof with a four foot six parapet. Director, Ms. Marlstein, uh, with the understanding that any building code is a minimum standard, it's the least you could do. I I'm amazed that in today's world regardless of whatever the building code is, you know, you're, you're spending a lot of money, you're making a beautiful building from the outside, you're spending a lot of time, money on, on planners to make the outside look substantially better. And then somehow or another, without being critical, you're just running out of gas. And I, I can tell you, uh, having built for, for almost 25 years um, and having done a lot of ADA retrofit, um, you could do better. You could do better. I'll leave it there. Um, I'd like to expand on that. As someone who uh, does have a disability, I am always keen to make sure that people with disabilities are taken into account when buildings are being built. And while you are not um, under the law mandated to provide an elevator, I really think that the person uh, behind these decisions should really rethink that and add an elevator. Thank you. Now, in, in your opinion, how many people would fit in each suite, about a thousand square foot suite? How many employees do you anticipate being in there? Sure. Um, my client actually submitted a statement of operations, which I have. Sorry. It's the sheet. Um, we, we expect... Um, that each suite have three to four employees for a total of 12 to 16 employees. You know, in the, so meaning with, with three to total. four? So four suites, three to four employees of each. So total, the entire building would be 12 to 16 employees. So these are not large offices that um, are constantly hiring and firing that may have to deal with 
with with employees who need uh, you know ADA compliance, you know wheelchair accessibility. Is that your opinion? I fair to say, yes. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I was going to bring up um, the lack of an elevator. It was already brought up. Thank you. Um, no matter what the law says, um, people with the disabilities who can't climb up and down stairs should have the capability to go to the second floor. You know, um, what about employees? Okay, an employee becomes uh, uh, is, is designated to be on the second floor for one of the people that rent out your suites as employees that um, for some reason become um, incapacitated and when they can't come up there, um, what do they do? Get fired or what? I don't know. You know, um, There's no way for them to go up the stairs unless you're gonna hire somebody to carry them up and down and that's usually not done nowadays. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that there is no elevator or some kind of a, a way to get upstairs um, without climbing the stairs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ms. Mr. Shan, could you offer any? Sure. Just... No, no, I have a, one more, sorry, one more follow-up question. Mm -hmm. How many square feet would an, would an elevator take up? Um, a typical elevator is about um, eight foot 10 by six foot eight. Um, and usually requires a masonry enclosure, which is, you know, would be a prohibitable expense on a building of this size. Um, I, I'm happy to discuss it with my client. Again, as of now, we are not proposing an elevator. And aside from the expense of mm -hmm. the elevator, I'm just curious if you could give me a rough number of how many square feet, 500 square feet off the floor space, 200. Um, I would say about 150 square feet. About 150 square feet. Mm -hmm. And that would, that's, that would significantly trim the building? So again, and that's not including a machine room, which might be required depending on what kind of elevator. So that would, you know, take up more space. Um, again, for a building this size, and for as you said, a building of this footprint, um, it's it's not typical that we would propose an elevator. Right. I know I'm going to play the bad guy here. Um, so don't crucify me. Um, but when it comes down to this application, the jurisdiction of the board, um, I know disability, everybody wants to comply with everything, and it's a great moral compass, um, but it's not within the ordinance itself. So we, we have to vote based upon the elements of the ordinance, and because we're dealing with the site plan, um, having an elevator in this is not part of the ordinance. It, it is an IBC issue. So the building code enforcement officer, uh, building department, they're all going to have to verify that because ADA is a federal standard, all right? So if they don't pass muster, guess what? They're not getting the permits. Uh, so unfortunately, it's a different jurisdiction. Um, it, it would be, you know, getting the permits uh, through the building department. And we really just have the authority of voting what's in front of us, what's based in the ordinance, uh, the variances that are in front of us. Um, and I do not like to be the one to, <laughs> to talk about that way, about the whole uh, ADA, but this is the jurisdiction we have before us. Mr. Shea, if the applicant chose to put an appendage on the building, such as like an exterior staircase or a fire exit, they could do that. So I'll throw the line out in the water if the applicant saw to it to put an exterior staircase out outside instead of inside, they would gain the room for an elevator. That would be the request that you make it down. Um, I'm throwing the line out in the water just as a, as a solution. And, 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 I'll, and I'll say this, you know, before you come get me, Donna, you know, we're all blessed with great health at the moment. Things change. You know, I'm on the back side of 50, and I can tell you, I don't like stairs uh, as much as I used to. Um, but, you know, there, there are people in every community that are disadvantaged. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, today we're all looking at things through healthy eyes. You know, the, uh, the back 40 sometimes changes for folks. So, listen, I understand and appreciate your concerns from a personal level. My father was bedridden and paralyzed for 10 years of the last of his life. So I understand conflict here but i can't require my client to put in an elevator if it's not required by code and he doesn't want to 
but I, he's in the audience, he's listening. So perhaps by the end of the night, we'll have an, an answer. But right now, he's not obligated to do it, and then we can't make him do it. Well, I just have a brief question. Do we, uh, from the, for the attorney, may or may not know at this, at the time of this uh, request, is the local ordinances with, under which we are operating compliant with the American with Disabilities Act? So the, when it comes down to the ABA, uh, you're, you're talking about construction code, um, IBC, everything like that. So um, perfect example would be like a disability ramp and everything to that extent. You, you would actually, um, when it comes down to the site plan, that would be in the outside, right? So disability ramps, um, different things like that, that would be actually be identified on the site plan to be ADA compliant. When it comes down to the internal structure of the building, that would be the business code. So, so the ADA does not speak to it, internal design? When so, it comes down to the internal design, it would be within what's within the ordinance, what's within our purview with the jurisdiction of the board to be able to restrict that. So just specifically, is the internal design, com sure. it's compliant with our ordinance, I think you know where I'm going with this, but is, is our ordinance compliant on internal design with ADA? So I, I, I can't speak for the ordinance and what it complies with, but New Jersey Building Code um, gives a list of, diff, of other codes that all buildings need to comply with. One of those codes is ANSI, which is um, disability code that's taken from ADA. It's, a, it's an adaptation of ADA, and we comply with New Jersey and version of ANSI. Um, and it, and in, inside the building, it's not just elevators, it's stair widths, it's bathrooms, it's um, turning radiuses and the like, and our building does and will comply with ANSI. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Thank Next you. witness. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to call up our traffic engineer, John Ray. Mr. Ray, please raise your right. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you present before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. You say your name, spell your last, and your credentials, please. John Ray, R E A, a professional engineer with McDonough and Ray Associates, traffic and transportation engineers. Thank you. We accept your credentials. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ray, just for the uh, record, you'd have an opportunity to visit the site and the area around the site. Uh, we did, and we prepared a traffic impact study dated January 5th, 2023. And if you could uh, go through your analysis and your uh, conclusions, please. Sure. Well, this is a, a relatively small office building, 6,000 square feet. It will generate approximately 10 peak hour trips during the morning and afternoon peak hours. The access to West County Line Road and Brewers Bridge Road will be limited to right in, right out access points only. There will be no left turns into or out of either one of the two driveways. And so as a result of that access configuration and the easier movement that needs to be made, the right turn exit only uh, from each of the uh, driveways, we have level of service A conditions, which are very unusual for driveways or for intersections in the township. So both exiting uh, driveways, exit movements will operate at level of service A for the design year. There are 30 parking spaces proposed, which meet the municipal ordinance requirement of uh, five spaces per thousand square feet. The building is 6,000 square feet. And so we have adequate parking. Uh, the circulation plan is logical and simple. Uh, the parking is adequate. We have the required number of handicap and uh, EV charging uh, parking spaces. Uh, probably one of the easier jobs I've had in quite a, quite a while in Jackson. So uh, everything has been designed properly, and I would anticipate the on-site and off-site circulation will operate safely and efficiently. Thank you, John. That's it. Peters? Mr. Ray, are you... Have you or the site engineer reviewed this application with the county yet? I have not. I don't know if Mr. Antilli has. Okay. It, it, I'm wondering if there are any proposed improvements for either of the, any of the road frontages that the um, project surrounds other than uh, the sidewalk. 
I'll let Mike talk about West County Line Road. I thought I heard him say no improvements were proposed along Brewers Bridge, but he may be able to elaborate on the county road. And do you have any concerns about the separation distance between the new right in, right out on Brewers Bridge and the existing jug handle or turn slot? I, I don't because of the low traffic volumes generated by the uh, by the small office building. And as long as the site triangle is kept clear, and I believe that looks to be the case, that's going to be a grassed area in between our driveway and the jug handle terminal, uh, mm -hmm. that would be sufficient. Thank you. I have no additional questions, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to actually just bring back, if, if we're done with John, bring back up the site engineer to address Mr. Peter's questions. I just have a question for John Ray. How do we ensure no one makes a left onto Brewer's Bridge? It's quite Excuse a distant. No uh, one makes there's, a left onto Bridge. There's going to be a channelizing island along with a no left turn sign. There, there will be an island there that will channelize traffic. Uh, you, you, you always can't prevent people from doing stupid things. I understand that, but we'll do everything we can do with the channelization, the signage, and give the police Title 39 powers to enforce the left turn restriction. Thank you. I just wanted to see one, wanted that on the record to ensure that. Okay. But certainly, we could put a, a no left hand turn sign on the um, on the Brewers Bridge Island. Correct. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Ray. Um, the last time that it looks like you, there was any kind of study done on um, the intersection of West. West County Line Road and Brewers Bridge was in September of 2020. Is that correct? That's correct. However, if you read that last paragraph on the bottom of page two, what we did do was we had done traffic counts in November 2022, two years after the October 2020 counts. We had done counts two years later at the intersection of County Line and New Prospect, and we found that those traffic counts were 15% higher than the October 2020 counts. So in order to do a conservative or a worst case analysis, we increased the October 2020 counts by 20%, even though the comparison showed that the November counts were only 15% higher, we bumped the volumes up by 20% to do a conservative analysis. But you picked up on something that was, you know, something that we considered and thought of, and, and that's what we're always doing when we do these traffic studies. We look for uh, historical data in the vicinity of the project that we're working on. We do the comparison, and if an adjustment to the volumes has to be made, we do that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Wright, would it be fair to say that the traffic generated here would be far less than the previous use of the property? A absolutely. A good point. There was a gas station on the site, and based on um, IT data, which the DOT uses, there would be 80 peak hour trips during the morning peak hour and 85 trips. And I'm giving you rough numbers rounded to the nearest multiple of five for the afternoon peak hour. And we're talking about 10 peak hour trips in and out. And, and I can also say, having been a tenant in a 6,000 square foot office building in, in Manasquan for the last 25 years, the numbers are pretty low. I have a dentist downstairs that's actually a more active, you know, because it's medical, they have a lot more traffic coming in and out. And, I've been there for 20, 25 years. We've experienced no problems. Thank you very much. We neglected to mention the uh, truck rental business that used to be in there as well. The what's that? Excuse me? The U-Haul. Uh, oh, yes. Truck there was a U-Haul well. rental business as well, too. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot going on in that property. Previously, correct. Thank you, Ms. Jennings. I believe you wanted to bring somebody back. Yeah, Mike, if you could just come back up to the stand here and answer Mr. Peter's questions with regard to any conversations that you've had with the county, and if you know of any improvements that they're anticipating. Um, yes, we did meet with the county, uh, I guess about a year ago now. Um, we talked about both entrances, even though their jurisdiction is just uh, County Line Road. They required a 10 foot easement, the actual one in dedication, they accepted a 10 foot easement there, which we're proposing on the site plan. As far as improvements, uh, nothing on County Line Road other than the entrances, uh, curbing being full face closed where they are currently depressed and proposing our island and, uh, and uh, right in, right out. As far as the municipal, there's no improvement there also other than, uh, of course, the sidewalk on both roads. And didn't they ask for a small dedication of the intersection of the two roads? They did, right at the intersection where the light is. 
that's proposed on our site plan as well. It's about 500 square feet. Mr. Peters, do you have any additional questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, I'd like to call up our last witness, Christine Nazareth Kukvon. I didn't even see you my name yet, Mark. Please raise your right hand. <laughs> I didn't even get any names out. <laughs> You solemnly swear from the testimony, information, questions, or comments presented before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Please state your name, spell your last, and your credentials, please. Yes. Uh, good evening, Chairman and members of the board. It's Christine Nazaro, N A Z Z A R O, Cofone, C O F O N E. Business address is 125 Half Mile Road, Suite 200, Red Bank, New Jersey, 07701. My credentials are that I am a licensed professional planner in the state of New Jersey. I've been practicing as such for 28 years or so. I've been qualified here in Jackson and in excess of 400 or so other planning and zoning boards. I teach planning and zoning courses for the Rutgers Center for Government Services, and I'm an affordable housing Thank special you. master. That's good. <laughs> good enough. We accept your credentials. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. And just, Christine, for the record, uh, you've had an opportunity to visit the site in the area around the site. Yes, I have. And you reviewed the township master plan and zoning ordinance? I did that as well, yes. And you've also reviewed the application? The application submission documents, yes, I've taken a look, as well as the professional review letters issued by your professional staff. Thank you. And if you could, uh, based on the testimony presented and the applications uh, submitted, if you could opine on whether or not the applicant has satisfied both the positive and negative criteria for the granting of the bulk variances. Yes, so this application is in the township's HC Highway Commercial Zone, so we're a permitted use. So we are asking for seven variances that both Ms. Jennings and Mr. Eintile um, identified earlier in the evening. I think that of, of those seven, three of them relate to the existing conditions of the property regarding area, frontage, and depth and nonconformities associated with those. We're seeking also two front yard setback variances to West County Line Road, as well as Brewers Bridge Road, where the or or as ordinance requires 60 feet. We're proposing 33 and a half to West County Line and approximately 37 to Brewers Bridge. Hearing some of the concerns tonight with the board with respect to the elevator, I do think that there is an opportunity and potential solution to increase the degree of that front yard setback to Brewers Bridge, push that building perhaps to about 30 feet, which would give the applicant the opportunity to create an elevator shaft in there. So, in my, and then the other two variances that we're seeking are for the refuse in the parking area um, in the front yard. Um, if I were teaching a class, I would tell my class that statutorily boards can grant variances under two conditions, C1 hardship conditions or C2 flexible C conditions where you would advance one or more purposes of the land use law. And the hardship are very clear in the land use statute. They're not unique to Jackson Township. I didn't make them up in my 28 years of practicing. They relate very specifically to conditions relating to the shape, size, or existing conditions on a piece of property. And here you have an existing undersized lot. Lot area in the zone is 40,000 square feet. This lot is just shy of 30,000 square feet. It has also got roadway frontages surrounding it. So it that which pre, uh, presents some practical difficulties in developing the property. In addition to that, as you heard, Ms. Jennings and Mr. Eintile testify to your state to, for the record that there is a right of way dedication associated with this application. So all of those things, in my opinion, set the variance relief up for a C1 variance for the hardship criteria. If, however, the board, given which I, I certainly think that we do substantiate the burden of proof with respect to the C variance relief. If you weren't convinced, you can certainly invoke the C2 statutory criteria if you find that one or more purposes of the municipal land use law would be advanced by this application. And that's what we call the C2 as planners or what you might sometimes hear planners call the flexible C. And then to advance that, you'd have to prove one or more purposes of the land use law, which are found at 40 colon 55D-2. Um, and they're listed by letter and not number. Criteria A talks about promoting the general welfare. I certainly think that rehabilitating the site, if you've had an opportunity to visit, you can see that it certainly has the shell of what used to be a gas station. It's not operating currently and certainly lacks curb appeal. So that allows us to rely on criteria A as well as criteria I, which talks about creating a desirable visual environment. Criteria G talks about providing sufficient space in appropriate locations 
for a variety of uses. I think that that's also appropriate here. I think this is an appropriate location. There are other law, uh, other offices. The Galvin Law Office is um, just, uh, I believe, north of the property, but there's other commercial uses. It's a permitted use in the zone. And we certainly were reducing the amount of lot coverage. So I think that there's certainly sufficient space in an appropriate location. And then criteria M, which talks about an efficient use of the land. This is a, a bit of a challenging site, given all the um, constraints on the property. And I think the applicant has proposed a well-suited office building um, that, that takes advantage of the uh, shape and size of the property. While we are not a use variance, so we don't necessarily have to demonstrate conformance with the master plan, there's one of the goals in the, in the Jackson master plan that I think the board can consider, which is to achieve a pattern and mix of land uses that achieves various community planning objectives, including the provision of quality, neighborhoods, protection of resources, and the economic development of the community, and the creation of a livable and desirable community. As planners, having vacant lots and underutilized sites in our highway commercial and our highway corridors certainly does nothing to advance or achieve that goal. So certainly I think approving this application would allow for the, the township to implement that goal in the master plan. And that also goes to the negative criteria. When you look at the negative criteria, the negative criteria does not ask you to hold this or other any, any other applicant to a standard that there be no detriment just that there be no substantial detriment and the benefits of the grant of the variance would, um, would outweigh any detriment. So I think here, even though we are asking for some relief relative to the setbacks and relative to the configuration of the property, which quite honestly, anybody developing this property would have to come and ask for that relief. I think the board can be comfortable that there will be no substantial detriment on the zone plan or the public good. When you're also looking at the C2, and I think in relation to the elevator, this becomes important because the C2, the flexible C, should result in what's considered a better zoning alternative. So as I was sitting in the galley, listening to the case go in and speaking with my client, it seems as to me that the board is, it is important to the board to have an elevator on this property and that you think it would be beneficial. So as planners, when we're balancing those things and saying, okay, how do we develop, redevelop this property and have it result in a better zoning alternative? One of the suggestions I thought could be a workout would be if we moved our building to the west and instead of asking for a 37 foot front yard setback to Brewers Bridge, if we were to ask the board for a 30 foot setback with the understanding that allowing that little wiggle room there would allow us to create an elevator on site. So to me, that creates a balancing act and a better zoning alternative or if we were to ask for that additional relief, it would create an opportunity for the applicant to, to address the board's concerns and create the elevator on site. And I think the board could look at that under the C2 statutory criteria as a better zoning alternative. Can you talk a little, <clears throat> sorry. Can you talk a little bit to the um, development pattern in the area regarding the setback relief or the setbacks that, that exist? So um, I can, I don't know if we have an aerial that we could show that could help the board to see that because I think pictures are usually better to see that. Right, so certainly the existing structures on the property are set back further to the property. And referring to A2 and evidence, you could see the subject property is outlined in red. Um, you can see when you cross Brewer's Bridge, the structure there is certainly closer to the required 60 feet. I would say the structures on either side of the subject property are also closer than 60 feet to the front yard setback, and certainly the properties across the street are. So not only do I think it would result in a better zoning alternative because it would allow for the elevator to be developed, but it would certainly, based on A2 and evidence, be consistent with the character of the area and have no substantial detriment. Excuse me, is it also true that every one of the buildings you pointed out predate the widening of County Line Road? Yes, they're all older buildings. Thank you. But again, this is also, I think it's important for the board to also recognize, this is an undersized lot. So the lot, the lot area in this is required to be 40,000 square feet. This is a 29,000 square foot lot. 
and it's impacted, as you can see, by frontages on all sides. So in my opinion, anyone redeveloping this property is going to have to request some reasonable variance relief or the site will continue to sit underutilized, unoccupied, and vacant, contributing absolutely nothing to the highway commercial corridor. Nothing positive anyway. Are you proposing to increase the square feet for the potential elevator? Only for the potential elevator, okay. sir. So it would be maybe two, I'd say, speaking with our project architect, she indicated that it would be only to about 200 square feet. Ish. So ish, 200 square feet ish with the intention to not increase over the 6,000 square feet we're proposing, simply only to accommodate the additional square footage that would be necessary to um, provide the elevator. Understood. I mean, of course, the applicant would like to have the building approved the way it is and not build the elevator. So this is really just a suggestion to try to accommodate some of the board's concerns. Certainly, if the board um, did not think the elevator was necessary, I'm sure my client would, would be very happy to hear that. In, okay, in the so, event, so for the record, it is yes. It is yes. Right, just, just the additional okay. square footage. Just get it on the record. Get it. Yes, back. certainly. Yes, I should have said that. That's okay. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Mr. Cleve, do you have any objections to the, from a engineering standpoint, from the building, you know, giving those extra seven feet? No, that's true. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Peters, any just make sure we have the right numbers in the resolution on the plans. Okay, thank you. Um, I do have a question because, I, and I, I guess it's probably for the attorney because um, I'm not sure Ms. Cathone has the answer, but she's the last witness. Signage. It was noted both in Mr. Clee's and our report, the location of the signage requires a design waiver. And I don't think that anyone else yet has talked about it. So Ms. Cafone gets the last card. What page of your report is that? Our report would be 6C2. This is your April 28th report? Yes. C2, okay. Where the minimum setback to the street right away for a 30 foot square foot sign is 25 feet, where the proposed monument sign is 20.1 from the street right of way. The plan shall be revised or a design waiver is required. So I think here um, we're only slightly deficient by about five feet or just under five feet. And this is certainly, if we push the sign back, we're going to potentially conflict with the circulation system. And given the fact that we have an undersized lot that has multiple frontages, I think that where Mr. Eintal has placed the sign on the property is probably the best location. Given the dual frontages, as well as the existing undersized nature of the lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. At this point, I'd like to open it up to the public. If anyone would like to come and speak on this application, please come forward. Seeing no public approach the microphone, make a motion to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Do you like to make any closing comments? Sure. I just think that uh, overall, this is actually an opportunity to redevelop what I indicated in the beginning is really just an eyesore at this intersection. Um, impervious coverage is being improved, landscaping, and a visually pleasing uh, building. And we would respectfully request that the board grant an approval. Anyone like to make any comments? I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. Um, just before you make that motion, is that that's as is? Uh, with with the adjunct of the elevator, approximately 200 square foot adjusted setbacks accordingly. Okay. Um, well, may, do I have a second on that motion? I'll second it. Thank you. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Bernstein? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Mr. Herring? Mr. Riker? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes, and I'd like to thank the applicant for adjusting their uh, proposal to meet the needs of the disabled community. Mr. Marzo? Yes. 
Mr. Heller? Mr. Wall? Yes. Mr. Herman? I, you know, just regarding the, the elevator, I know that this board doesn't really have a purview to demand an elevator. We're really looking at the site plan, but I do thank the applicant again, echoing Mr. Sullivan, that thank you for putting it in. It definitely adds a lot to the, you know, the building and the future occupants. And I vote yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Congratulations. Thank you. Before, before the next application, we have a few changes to the agenda schedule. So the July 3rd, 2023 meeting is going to be canceled. Um, the three applications for that night, the first is Block 4901, Lot 13, GM 425 Harmony LLC, will be moved from the July 3rd meeting to the July 17th meeting. Block 102, Lot 1, Yosef Rothenberg, will be carried from the July 3rd, 2023 meeting to the July 17th, 2023 meeting. And the last application, Block 12201, Lot 16 and 18, Bennett's Mills Realty, LLC, will be carried from the July 17th, 2023 meeting to the October 16th, 2023 meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. may, may I please have a motion for those three, those three changes? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And for our next application tonight, we have Block 2501, Lot 3, 340 West Commodore, LLC. Okay, Mr. Clay, take it away. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. An application for amended preliminary and final uh, major site plan. Um, a board had previously granted uh, approval for the construction of 29,400 square foot uh, um, business office and 293,000 square feet of uh, office floor area. The applicants um, requesting an amendment, um, bringing it down to two buildings, building one being 250,000 a warehouse, 17,000 worth of business office, and building two, 92,000 square foot a warehouse and 61. Um, 125 square feet of business office. Um, we had heard prior testimony, the applicant or the board had um, requested certain revisions, the applicant um, be made or made to the uh, the plan, revised plans have been submitted. Um, so maybe there's some testimony from the applicant regarding those revisions and how it complies with the, um, the board's prior comments. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Peters. Still a permitted use in the zone. Um, we look forward to the testimony with regards to the changes to the plan. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Salvatore Alfieri, Cleary, Giacobbe Alfieri, and Jacobs on behalf of the applicant. Uh, we were here on September 19th, started the testimony. Several uh, technical issues were raised by the board during the course of that testimony. Uh, Mr. Borden's office submitted revised plans on October 27th. Um, and uh, Mr. Borden is here again this evening. He's going to summarize the um, the changes that have been made indicate that we believe no variance relief is being requested um, and be prepared to answer any questions the board or the public may have. And I guess for the record, there is a gentleman here from Tilton Auto Body, which is to, if you're facing a property, it's to our left. We've agreed that as a condition of approval, if the board were to grant this approval, they have certain decorative or retaining walls that are in front of their property that actually encroach upon the right of way that's owned by the county. And if we approve it, if this is approved and we construct it, we would agree to, re to relocate those improvements out of the right of way onto their property as part of our road improvement program. So if this is approved, that would be a condition of approval. And he's here tonight if he has any other comments or questions. Thank you, Mr. Borden. You were sworn and qualified at the last hearing. So let's just do it again, just for new okay. attorney, new rep. Thanks. Please, please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony, information, questions, or comments present will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. The same, state your name, spell your last, and you can do a shortened version of your credentials. Certainly. Uh, Ian Borden, uh, President of Professional Design Services on Airport Road in Lakewood, New Jersey. Licensed professional plan in the state of New Jersey. Testified in front of hundreds of boards throughout the state of New Jersey for the last 35 years. Graduate of Rutgers. And thank you. We accept thank your you. credentials. Thank you. And Mr. Borden, before you discuss the changes that were made since the last hearing, can you just give a brief summary of what this application is in comparison to what has been already previously approved and partially constructed? Yes. Thank you. Yes, I'll quickly. Uh, 
do that. Uh, up on the screen now is Exhibit A1 that was presented in September. That's an aerial of the site. I'm going to ask Anthony if you could go to Exhibit A2. Exhibit A2 is uh, the approved site plan that's currently under construction and partially completed. Uh, this plan was approved for three warehouse buildings containing 333,510 square feet, um, 343 parking spaces were required, and 359 parking spaces uh, were approved. Uh, since the approval, the phase, what we call the phase one building, which is the building on the far right, has been completed. That I'm sure the board members know that is the building that was uh, damaged during the tornado uh, a month or two ago. Um, this application precedes, of course, that storm, but the intent is, I'm sure, to fix or replace that building. Uh, but we're, we're speaking about phase two, which is the, uh, the two buildings on the western part of the job. I should have noted uh, West Commodore Boulevard, it runs along the bottom. North is to the top of the page, and Route 195 runs along the, uh, the top. And Tilton, that Mr. Alfieri mentioned, is on the west or the, uh, the left side, as he said. So what we are proposing is to amend the site plan approval regarding phase two. If you don't mind, Anthony, go to A3. Uh, this is the site plan that we had again presented in September, uh, which is to consolidate the, the remaining two buildings into a single building. Uh, this building would have a, uh, would this building, this, the combined building is larger than the two buildings uh, standing alone. So the total uh, project would increase in size by approximately 30,000 square feet to 363,185 square feet. Uh, three, um, again, we have 342 parking spaces are required and 359 are provided. The reason the number of required parking spaces did not increase, even though we increased the building area, is because the office area, the administrative office associated with the project actually decreased. The original project had 29,000 square, 400 square feet of administrative offices with the remainder being warehouse. And this proposal has 23,125 square feet of office with the remainder being warehouse or 340,060. Um, as a result of these, this change, we have not increased the impervious coverage. There is a stormwater basin on the right side that's already constructed, but we're not increasing impervious uh, coverage. Um, there is a single major access drive to West Commodore, which is centrally located in the lot. There were there are substantial improvements, widening improvements, and striping improvements to West Commodore. Boulevard, uh, none of those things are changed as a result of this modification. Uh, when we, and this is the site plan that we, we appeared for in September. Uh, we did make changes to the plans, as Mr. Alfieri noted in October. And that would be, if you don't mind, Anthony, go to Exhibit A4. It doesn't look substantially different from this view. Actually, I'm going to ask you to skip to A5, Anthony. I think that's more uh, more illust illustrative of what we've what we've done here. Uh, there were a, a number of items discussed at our our September hearing. Um, most notably, well, in in different parts of the site, on the rear of the site, the original project. There is a small part of the residential zone in the uh, northwestern corner of the site where I'm pointing to. Uh, that one lot up there behind Tilton is zoned residential. Uh, we had received a variance for the uh, buffer in the original approval. Uh, we have eliminated that variance by relocating. The, there's a rear access drive. We we pulled that down so we provide the buffer required by the ordinance. So we actually eliminated a variance that was already approved under the original approval. We have some truck parking in the back here. Uh, we It was suggested that we flip the direction. We had it aimed this way. It's a one-way drive back here. We flipped it the other way, and we substantially added more landscaping along uh, not only the residential zone. Uh, even though we 
physically comply with the buffer requirements, we added a substantial amount of landscaping there, as well as added a substantial amount of landscaping along the 195 uh, frontage. And that included additional evergreen tree plantings. We also added uh, some landscaping. Uh, we, in the initial design, had set the building and the uh, driveway back farther than the ordinance required. And we had some plantings up here, uh, but uh, we've added uh, some additional landscaping there as well. Uh, to the extent that uh, that landscaped area has a width of 80 feet, which contains one row of deciduous tree trees along West Commodore, one road, one row of ornamental deciduous trees, and three rows of evergreen stream trees, which is the darker uh, items, uh, when the ordinance only requires a row of deciduous street trees there. So we've we've added substantial landscaping in an effort to, uh, there is residential zoning to the west of us on the opposite side to the south of West Commodore. Directly across the street is is commercial zoning, but to our west in this area, and there's an aerial Actually, that's a good segue, Anthony, if you don't mind going to. Uh, going to the last exhibit, exhibit A6. This is again, this is an aerial. We had the aerial as A1, but this aerial has been prepared to show the surrounding land uses. As I mentioned, we talked about the, red, the R3 zone up on the northwest corner. And then what I was describing was this R3 zoning that's not uh, along either the frontage, uh, the boundary of the site, or across the street, but is Caddy Corner on the other side of uh, West Commodore, and uh, um, that that is why we were asked and why we did provide that additional uh, landscaping there. Uh, one of the items that was discussed in the September hearing uh, was uh, the loading docks of the new building are 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 in the westerly direction. Uh, the loading docks for the phase one building are in the easterly direction with the central area on the site plan is all the office parking in between the buildings. One of the items that was requested at the uh, September hearing was to see if we could flip the building to put the truck on the on the east side and put the office parking over here. We did look at that very carefully and that that would not work with the truck circulation. That would mix up the truck circulation with the office parking. Right now we have a we have them separated by this perimeter road that goes around the property. Uh, if we were to flip the building, it would be mixed in with the office and it just would not would not practically work. And, and thereby the reason for this exhibit as well, because the areas to our west are a sequence of light manufacturing uses. You have Tilton, uh, you have different auto related uses for extending hundreds of feet to our to our west. So in my opinion, we've we've certainly done more than our necessary share as a fully conforming site having no variances with with providing the required buffer to the r3 zone in the back as well as providing substantial uh, uh, landscaping uh, one item that i i skipped over was we we did also uh, intend it was omitted by mistake but uh, we will provide the 15 ev ready parking spaces that are required under the uh, under the 2021 uh, state law a couple follow-ups, Mr. Borden. First of all, um, there were three conditions within the ordinance as it relates to warehousing. Um, no goods are, are sold retail from the premises. All items stored will be in completely enclosed within buildings and uh, storage of chem hem hazardous chemicals is prohibited. That was a that's in the ordinance. It was a condition of the prior approval and it would remain a condition of this approval. That's correct. You also indicate that there are no variances associated with the application, but Mr. Yes. Peters does comment on two potential variances. Yeah, the report. sign complies with the ordinance. So the sign will comply. And yes. he also questions the parking that it um, testimony is required to make sure that we do conform with the parking. Yeah, I believe I, I did that week. As I said, we had reduced the office use uh, so that the uh, parking would. Uh, would comply. In fact, we have access parking uh, than what's required. The um, there are various technical comments con that are contained within the board professional reports. Um, you, you would agree as a condition of approval to address those conditions to the satisfaction of the board professionals. Yep. Yes. There was one, and then all of the conditions that were contained within the original resolution of approval 
would carry over, but the applicant is seeking relief from one of the conditions. Is that correct? That's the hours, correct. Can you describe for the board what that relief is that we're seeking? Not relief revision that we're seeking. Right. It's an unregula unregulated fact in the ordinance, but we are seeking to operate the warehouse with three shifts. So that would be 24 hours a day. Yes. And is there anything in the ordinance that prohibits that type of um, hour of operation for a business? No. Um, otherwise, there are no other changes that are being proposed from the original approval. And again, we would meet all the conditions um, of the prior approval. That's correct. Uh, just a couple other things I have in my notes. Um, we had agreed, and I'm not sure it was in the original approval, but we would agree that we would attempt to market the space so that you users would consider solar panels on the roof. That would be that would remain absolutely, and we would provide no idling signs on the property as well. Yes, and I believe that is it, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clay. Peter, is there any comments? I believe by the last hearing, somebody brought up the glare onto 195 from the trucks that are going to be parking in that area. Is that going to be taken care of by your bushes? Well, that's why we switched the direction of them, first of all. So the headlights wouldn't be aimed in the direction of traffic heading east on 195. Plus, we added the landscaping. So I believe we did address that. And the noise coming off the trucks for the one R3 property in the rear. Is there any way to? Well, I think that's it? a no idling that Mr. Palfieri uh, mentioned, I believe. There's no idling. And the condition of approval that you originally first stated in the beginning of the hearing, could you just point out on there where that's going to be? The, uh, the, the condition of approval that you started out the hearing with, uh, Mr. Alfieri. Tilton, right, Tilton. right, just so yeah. we can show it right on that exhibit. Yeah, right? that's that's this Tilton is this property next door to us. Their driveway is. If you want to zoom in here, Anthony, you could zoom in right where right where I'm pointing. If you can see that, um, there the driveway to Tilton is very close to our property line. When we widen Commodore, we taper, and you can see their driveway here. They have a small uh, decorative little retaining wall there that's actually inside the county right away. So my client is legally entitled with our county approval. The county has fully approved the site and much of the construction and the widening has been completed already. But uh, the owner has asked if we could uh, rebuild that wall back on his property and we've agreed to do that. Can we, can we make that a condition as it's an offset improvement on an easement? We've yeah, we've offered it. So. We've we've offered it, so we're willing to accept. You're not imposing it. We're offering. Correct. It. I just want to know if okay. it's something that's enforceable by us, or it's if it's work. a if it's a condition, um, and we put it in the resolution, we can do that. Um, as long as we have the consent um, of the landowner, who would appreciate if you had testimony uh, for. So if he would. Uh, you know, be willing to come up and just put testimony on the record that he is accepting the improvement that would be helpful for the record. You want when the, when we open it to the public. Yeah, that's that's we'll fine. Yeah. And this condition will be before we complete before you complete resolution compliance, or will be up to I think before we receive a CO for the second building. Before we receive a CO, in my opinion. Right, because the first building, when completed, that was not a condition, and they can they could certainly get that CO. No, I'm just asking who would enforce that. Okay, yeah, we would make it a condition of the second CO. That's fine. Then you have a mechanism right. to enforce. Yeah, I mean, te technically, because you have something else going on, somebody else's property, you're supposed to have that on the application with the individual signing off, you know, on the plan. But if we have the individual here who is willing to stipulate that they, you know, accept it, they're um, they want it to happen that would go towards significant lengths of making the record pristine. That, that's fine. They'll come, he's, yeah, he stayed, okay. <laughs> I have a question, sure. if I may. The, um, the parking, the 21 trucks that whose lights, if I'm reading it right, would be facing Tilton. Mm -hmm. Is that part of a conforming application or is that part of design waiver three?
for example, if those 21 trucks that are facing, I believe from looking at it right, facing Tilton's property, now 24 hours, was it approved at 24 hours last time? It was not. Okay, so I just wanna make sure we understand where we're changing. We're going from not having 24 hours to having 24 hours and having 21 trucks with their lights facing Tilton's property. Tilton may think that that's okay. I'm not, that's, I'm not judging that. But, but is that something that's as a right or is that a waiver that is being requested? Because one thing to put two buildings together to same size, that's not it. It's putting two buildings together, adding 30,000 square foot and flipping the lights over 21 trucks going to Tilton's property. Is that as of right? Or is that is that something that's being asked to the board? Because you know, if I if I own Tilton's property, I would think you just reduce the value of my property. That's that's just my opinion. I just want to understand is that a, as of right or is that a waiver? Peter, is, is that something you can answer? Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> The, the answer is no, uh, there's no waiver created as a result of that. You concur? And for the record, how many truck loading spaces are on the west side of the property? Oh boy, I gotta count them. Oh, I count 21. So, Mr. Chairman, um, having the loading facing the exterior property line is not a design waiver, nor is it a variance. However, the spillage of light onto the property would be a design waiver. They've indicated since the last application, when it was brought up both by the professionals and the public, to increase the landscaping along the common property line with Tilden. So, to the, that would take care of the design waiver for light spillage off-site by placing the buffer on the common property line. Just to make sure I'm not confusing this, Mr. Chairman, I'm looking at parking stalls, section 244. I'm looking at a design waiver request number three, parking stalls proposed along major circulation drives where none are permitted. Am I, is, am I mixing apples and oranges with looking at the parking stalls along circulation drive, or is that, I'm looking at the wrong location. Like, do I have that wrong? We're talking about this area right here. Right? We have these 21 loading docks that when parked in the loading dock, the headlights are facing to the west towards Tilton. Those headlights are not on while the truck is in the loading dock. I'm sure if they arrive at nighttime, they'll be briefly on while they pull in and back up and park. And then once they're parked, again, we have a no idling uh, provision. They're immediately turned off. Yes, is that a conforming illustration? Yes. I think that's probably my question. Yes, is it is. And illustration? yes, I think it's also important to point out that if you go back to A2, Anthony, mm -hmm. and I wish I brought my glasses. And and and, and that element. If you if you enlarge, if you don't mind, Anthony, the left side of the the, the property here. Perfect. Thank you. We have all these parking spaces, car parking spaces. That were all directed headlights at Tilton, a number that far exceeds 21, probably at least double. So I would argue that we're reducing the headlight impact on Tilton by having loading docks. You're comparing an 18 wheeler with a car? I'm sorry? That's comparing or contrasting an 18 wheeler set of headlights with the cars? Sure. Okay. So is that the waiver? And, and There's I'm no waiver. To belabor it. But so then which item, which is, a, can you describe what design waiver three is then? It must be somewhere else. Unless I'm looking at A3, September 19, 2022, design waivers requested number three. It may be a different item that I may be confusing it with uh, what, what I'm talking about here. A3, September 19, 2022, design waiver three. Parking stalls proposed along major circulation drives where none are permitted. I don't. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm enlarging it to read it. <laughs> you do a, very good on it. Unless it's a copy and paste from another application. I mean, if it's a mistake. So that design was actually eliminated because 
under the original, again, A2 is on the, on the screen, the major circulation drive goes through the center of these office parking areas here. All right. So, is so, so we there? actually eliminated that waiver. So, okay. So then to clarify, is design with, that's no longer, it's showing as a request. Is it no longer? No, this is, this A, A3 was the, uh, that's no longer requested. That's correct. Do you want to amend the exhibit? That should have been, yes, that should have been removed from the plan. So what's the legal, how do you, do you want to amend the exhibit? So we're looking at the correct exhibits. So they would be able to um, amend the minimus aspects of the, right. so the exhibits are exhibits are not necessarily evidence, which is sent in 10 days prior, right? So. Um, they would be able to make de minimis revisions to this as long as it's on the record that it's not significantly impacting the plan, which, which they did. I mean, clear, Mr. Borden. So if you think it's de minimis, well, it's, so it's the basis of the, the question. No, no, I, I understand that. So if um, if they're indicating that it's not a waiver, and our board professionals uh, agree with that, um, and the testimony comports with that, then I don't think the representation, the kind of, you know, de minimis representation on the exhibit itself would submarine the entire application as to. I'm not suggesting right. that. I'm just suggesting that we should reasonably rely on what's in front of us. Oh, I, I agree with yeah. you. And I, you know, believe that all exhibits well, and all evidence presented to the board should be pristine. Um, sometimes some things slip through and it's the, it's kind of the reality of the business. You know? in, in this case, what the board is I, I, I didn't take credit for something I should have taken credit for. In other words, we were granted a waiver for A2 for this driveway going through the middle of these parking spaces. We removed that scenario with, with what we proposed under subsequent exhibits in the plan you have. I simply did not eliminate the design waiver. So I didn't take credit for something that I actually achieved and did not realize. So I thank you for that, Mr. Walker. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Shane, um, the original approval uh, for ours, was it two shifts? And now we're looking for three? Yes. Dad, I am unsure of that. I'm going to defer that to the uh, I, board professionals who are to Mr. Alfie. I could read the resolution, the language. Would that help? Is it just a yes or a no? <laughs> it, it doesn't say shifts. It just says 11. There'll be no shipping or receiving during the overnight third ship shift, which will be considered 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. All right, so now you would like to do that? Correct. Okay. So that's what you're asking for. And the revised site plan, consolidation of the bill. Just a little note. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, do you have a um, engineer who could testify to the light spillage off the site? Well, we, we don't. If that's an important feature, we'll have to come back with an engineer to talk about light spillage. Mr. Fleming, I believe, is your hand? When you describe light spillage, you're talking headlights or 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 area lights, parking lots. Talking about there. the truck headlights onto Tilton's property, I believe we were talking before about the bushes being installed are going to shield Mr. Tilton's property from some of those headlights. So I just want to make sure that they're going to be thick are you, enough. Are you asking us to put something along that common boundary line? I believe you that would shield the headlights? We will be putting something along, correct? Well, do you well, have a spot elevation on the parking lot versus the berm? It may not even be necessary. You know, it, I, I, at the risk of annoying people, I, I think it's important to point out that when we talk about Tilton, it's a property in the same zone. It's in the LM industrial zone, and it's a junkyard. That's they store cars there to prove to store cars. It's a variance that my my firm did for Mr. Sculpert. So this is there's no buffering required to an adjoining LM zone, certainly not an adjoining industrial use. If the board is asking me to to put something along that side lot line, we are landscaping that side lot line. Um and I believe light spillage would be a design waiver. So really no, it's not. Why, why do we keep this not? I thought, I thought our, our board professionals mentioned before that light spillage would be a design waiver. 
Did I miss? If, if you don't mind, go back to A6, Anthony. Yeah, and before we get too far down the road and chase rabbits around the parking lot, um, is, is it out of the question just to put a, 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 a two foot berm there and let the, uh, the landscaping do its job? We, we, we have that. If I go back one exhibit, please, Anthony. You know, I, I'll tell you, I, you know, I own a bunch of Kenworks. I'm going to say that the, the lights are maybe 40 if you look, inches if, above the ground. I I don't recall this being discussed. If it was, but we did it. Uh, th this area is the boundary line that we're speaking of. We're tilting on the left side. We have on the landscape plan uh, those solid colors. If you zoom in, Anthony, on the left side, you can see. But these are individual uh, shapes of evergreen trees. We're planting. We're planting almost fifty evergreen trees between our edge of our uh, drive and the property line. Is there a berm? Uh, no, we could create a small berm if you'd like as well. If, if I could just simple, simplify That's fine. it, 18 inches, two foot or whatever above the curb, not going. That would certainly knock the headlights down. And Yeah, because and the trees going to do their job. And, and That's fine. We could add that. Keep we could simple. then plant the trees on top of that berm. That would be a condition of the approval? Sure. I see, just just clarify that this we have we have a we have an area along uh, a landscaped area along the western side of the property where we have proposed planting evergreen trees. Uh, we will add to that a a small berm between eighteen and twenty four inches, and those trees that are shown on the plan will be planted on top of the berm. The berm will help along with the trees will certainly block any headlights that might project beyond the property line. Other questions? Dale Ferry, any other witnesses? No, we'd like Mr. Tilton to come up though, just to confirm that one point, but no. So at this point, uh, we're going to open up to the public. If anyone would like to come forward to speak about the application, please come forward. Just come forward. I have a question. Thank you. I'm sorry, please, please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony, information, questions, or comments you present before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Please state your name, spell your last, and your address. Uh, Gardino, G U A R D I N O. Brian. Thank you. I live at 371, which is uh, across from Paul's. Garage, 371 Commodore. Which is next to Tilton. Tilton, Paul's Garage. I'm across the street. Thank okay. you. Now, the tractor trailers are going eastbound, and there's going to be a jug handle to go into the, into the warehouse. Now, the tractor trailers are really long, you know, and at a certain time, all the tractor trailers will start lining up and the, the jug handle will start to get backed up and the, the trailers will start to start just idling on the side of the road in front of the houses, blocking traffic. I mean, that's a that's a guarantee. There's not enough room for tractor trailers, 21 of them coming in and out. And it's not just 21 parking spaces and 21 and we're done. This is a 24 hour shift, which means that there's gonna be uh, tractor trailers waiting to get into parking spots. And where are the tractor trailers going to wait while the uh, trailer spaces go open? They're gonna be idling on West Commodore Boulevard or they're gonna be idling inside the parking area. And 300 and 300 cars coming in and out is going to cause, you know, a whole bunch of problems. You know, there's going to be like a, pretty much people working, you know, the, the graveyard shift. They're not going to be the um, best people, you know, available. You know, they're going to be uh, coming probably as from Amazon. You know, they're going to be, uh, you know, pretty much busting them in from like Trenton and things like that. There's going to be a whole bunch of police reports coming on all day. It's going to be a whole bunch of, um, you know, there'd be a whole bunch of problems with that. And also coming from the other side, it's also going to back it up. And this is, this is, a, this is a West Commodore Boulevard where there's also school buses coming in at the same time. 
So you're going to have school buses going back and forth, waiting for tractor trailers to make a jug handle. And, you know, I mean, what, what, uh, what traffic study are we working with? Are we working with the traffic study from 2020? What, what was the last traffic report on this? Well, you, you raised a couple of questions. So um, you want us, we could respond to each yeah. one. So Ian, first of all, how many um, loading zones were in the approved plan that can be built by right? Right, the, and that's an important point that I did not bring up. And that is the original approval with two separate buildings had 36 loading zones. So this, this proposal to consolidate into a single building actually reduces the loading zones from 36 to 21. And the second question is, we did not do an updated traffic no. report because um, our position was that it's a, it's just a consolidation of two buildings as opposed to, and a reduction in the number of loading spaces, or yes. loading zones, I should say, or loading spaces. So that's why it has not been updated, but if the board needs something updated, we're certainly willing to do it. Did that can, respond to your two questions? I, yeah, but I you got to remember that uh, Jackson is is growing faster than the traffic report study that probably was done in 2020. I mean, people from Brooklyn are moving in here crazy exponential rate. Yeah, and just for the board, I'm sure you all know this, but since it's a permitted use and it's variance free, offsite traffic can't be considered. All you can consider is our driveway to make sure it operates safely and efficiently. Anything that happens offsite is is really a, a zoning issue that the governing body should deal with if it changes zoning. But otherwise, we you know we only have to deal with our driveway. Well, you got to understand that that driveway is going to back up everything, left and right, east and west, and especially I mean where are the trailers going to be when they're waiting to get into a receiving dock. We don't see that as being- as there, there is no waiting. There is no waiting? No. It's gonna be a uh, 24 hour thing, right? And the trailers are gonna have a spot open all the time. Obviously not true. I've worked in logistics over 30 years. I know what tractor trailers do. I know. Deliveries that work for FedEx. You know, you, you say it's only going to be like, uh, you know, five minutes for a tractor trailer to come in and out, but it's going to be 21 times five times, you know what? How many tractor trailers are going to come in an hour? Is it going to be one loading time? No, probably not. It's going to be 24 hours of tractor trailer loading. Depends on who the tenants are and what the volume is, with whether they the hours of when it occurs or not, right. we can't so say. There's, there's no telling what the tractor trail loading time is. Correct. That's unacceptable, really. Yeah. Plenty, of, plenty of things that could go wrong on this. Yeah. Mr. McCord? Just lower the microphone. Sorry. The microphone. Thank you. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony, information, questions, or comments you present before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. And Thank if you could speak up because I'm partially oh. deaf. Thank you. Please state your name, spell your last, and your address. Please. Liesel, L I E S E L. Last name, T R E A C Y. 361 West Commodore Boulevard, Thank you. Jackson. Thank you. And if you could put up the uh, slide that shows the residential across the street. Page six, Anthony. The next one, there we go, this one. I am that R3. That the one that I'm pointing at? Correct. Okay. How many of you have been following this since the original proposal in 2018? Well, I trump you all because I've been following it and I've been through every single piece of that file. And I had a recent conversation with Mr. Perpero and he assured me 
that they would follow the original plan from 2018, which was hours of operation, nine in the morning, I mean, seven in the morning till six at night. I'll repeat that, seven in the morning till six at night. Are you, are you describing, you, you're, you're claiming though? <clears throat> I'm not me, claiming, I'm reading. You're stating that those are the hours of operation? That's what was in the original plan that Mr. Perpero assured me they were following. I have the resolution of approval from April 15th, 2019, and it's the hours of operation that I read in previously, which would have been 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. That was your request? No. That's it was not that. approved. Well, I'm reading from the approval, so I, I, would, I didn't handle it, so I don't It wasn't approved. It was, okay. it was brought up. Okay. That, that's, okay. That's the signed resolution of approval. I do want to say one thing, though. I, I'd like somebody to show me somewhere in your code book where light manufacturing allows 24-7, or no, at least 24-6. It's really the other way around. We would, you would have to show us where it's not allowed. But, it um, says it right there in the book. All right, somebody yeah. bring it up, because I don't bring the whole file with me. Sorry. And Mr. Chair, you had a different question about the, while we're looking for that? No, yeah. I was asking if it's permitted, again, if a previous approval said something the board could does the board speak up please because your your voice goes up your oh, thank you so what I, I was asking is that if a since they're coming back before the board the board could amend the approval at any time irrelevant yeah, that's the request that we're making for the amendment to the approval um because there's nothing in the ordinance that prohibits the request that we're making thank you Mr. Shea. Um, I just, just two general comments. So um, where we're at right now, technically this is general comment and also cross-examination of the applicant's experts. So- Sorry, um, I can't hear you. So uh, so where we're at right now, within the, the process and procedure of the board proceeding, um, it, it's technically general comment plus cross-examination of the applicant's uh, experts. So what that means is that you can ask general comments, uh, you know, general questions about the application, everything that's been submitted, the, uh, uh, the review letters produced by the board, um, any documents produced by the applicants, the application itself. Um, you can ask those questions to the applicants experts. Um, when it comes down to your general comments, you can make general comments to the board, your, your, your beliefs, how you feel about things. Obviously this, is, this means a lot to you, it's, it's emotional. It's not um, emotional. Well, factual. that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we can't have hearsay testimony. So, and I, I fully believe you that you that you had a conversation with Mr. Papora, zoning officer. He, he probably did make some reassurances to you. But uh, when it comes down to the testimony, the board has to consider during this public comment period. Um, we the board can't take into consideration hearsay testimony. You know, like. He said, she said, this person told me this. Um, I understand that you're making a representation from a town official, but this still would be considered hearsay testimony. So if you do have any direct questions of the expert, um, if you do have any general statements that you want to make about the application or the site plan um, or the, the statement of operations or anything that these people intend to do on the site or operate the site uh, specifically about, that you can do. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have Mr. Papora here to cross-examine, so to speak, as to the um, references you're making to his conversation he had with okay. you. I understand, but I do, I do want to tell you that I have read the code regulations for light manufacturing, and they do not allow 24-hour operations. Can any of you disagree with that? Or do you even know? Well, we're going to defer just that. Repeat that again, please. That you you read the code and it said light manufacturing does not allow twenty four hour operation. It's, it's, um, there, there's no zone in town that that allows it. it it's not a. It's as Mr. Alfieri said. It's there. There's nothing in the code whatsoever about hours of operations. There is. Okay, we'll end that conversation because. We're not getting anywhere, but I can tell you there isn't. It's not allowed. I want to ask why the original two building plan 
needs to be changed. Because being that I'm R3 and now you're having all those trucks right across from my driveway. And I know planning is supposed to take into consideration residential, whether it be next door or across the street. Now, nobody lives at Tilton, as far as I know, they're not supposed to. So I'm not too worried about the headlights. I, however, live there. And I have a neighbor that lives next to me and another neighbor that lives there. So apparently we don't count. That's not true. We, you count very much so. And it was for that reason that our initial testimony, we added three additional rows of trees in this part of the site to precisely block the your home and the adjoining homes from any lights or any activity. And what happened to the wall? Was that no, was in the original plan, too. No, there was no wall ever. There was. I'm sorry, there was. What's that? I hate to have you guys playing catch up, but you are. That was in between. That was, oh, between the, yes, the between the two buildings, yes, facing West Commodore. That's. All right. So, why was, why, why do you need to change the the three building plan. The, uh, the applicant indicates through their marketing that a, a larger one building, um, there are tenant needs, whereas the smaller, narrower buildings are having a hard time identifying tenants. And we don't have a tenant signed up because the process takes time, but that's the reason. Which way, are, if, the, if you do have this plan, those trucks are going to back in. Oh, by the way, there's not. 30 or 40, because if you refer back to Remington and Vernick engineers, April 9th, 2019, you will see that each bay has two loading docks. So double it and it's listed and I have it here if you'd like to see it. So you're talking about the approved plan now, right? Is that what we're speaking of? When, what they mm -hmm. What, what year was that report? April 9th, 2019. 19, it's okay. the same as far as loading dogs. There's two backups for each bay. So they can have double trucks. So anyway, my question is, which way, if you did this plan, which way are they going to leave their backed up spot. Are they going to go north towards 195 and then circle around, or are they going to come south towards West Commodore Boulevard and go out the driveway? Is there a plan for that? Uh, they can go either direction. Okay, so I can count on 20 or 30 trucks headlights coming in my window. Again, minimum. Okay. That's why we added all that landscaping that we added. Well, Again, we have four four rows of landscaping where none are required. Well, I've seen your landscaping. I live there. You haven't, they're this tall. You haven't seen what hasn't been planted yet. And oh. we're talking about headlights, and headlights aren't taller than three feet. So, okay. What about noise? There are noise regulations in Jackson. We're, so if there's 30 trucks running at one time, how do you think that's going to affect the residential people? And not to mention the fact that they're all going to go down the road. But even if they weren't going down the road, on their way out or parked or ready to leave, how do you think that's going to affect the noise? Because you talked in your uh, previous application about 70 decibels. When a tractor trailer, if that's what they end up using, which you don't even know because you don't know who's going to be in this place because it's for lease, is 100 to 150 decibels. That's a lot of noise. Well, the only, uh, the only thing we could say in response to that is that neither this board nor this applicant has the power 
to amend the noise ordinance and the state statute that deals with noise, the applicant and every property owner has to comply. They probably would. They have to comply. There's, we, it's not a discretionary thing. Well, it, here's here's the problem. And I and I spoke with this about this with Mr. Papero. Because it's going to be leased or sold or what have you, rented. It was on the internet, but it's obviously been pulled since the tornado wiped out the building. You don't know who's going to be in there, what widgets they're going to be moving around in there. Uh, you don't know what kind of trucks they're going to be using. And, and if, I, if I could, I used to the benefit of Dr. Google. A chainsaw is 150. A truck is 100. Have you ever been next to a truck? Have you ever I driven have, one? Um, I have all the fuel for myself, okay? Okay. So I'm just, I'm just straightening out a few things well, here. I, I understand where you're I'm going. I'm taking my information from the New Jersey Department of Transportation. Now, so maybe now, Let me just um, stop for a second. When we have a conforming application, which this is a conforming application, I believe. When we have a conforming application, traffic, you know, all these type of things are not relevant to the board's decision. The board has to look at the application. We have to look at the site. Everything else really goes into the master plan, really goes into the zoning. And, you know, unfortunately, once it's zoned a certain way, the board can't limit that. Well, you need a new traffic study for one because it was done so long ago. Uh, there's close to a thousand residents in Gardens of Jackson, and there's 95 residents property owners. Unfortunately, a the board cannot take into account any off-site traffic. What? Meaning if this traffic, if this pro, if this project will cause traffic off the site of the on Commodore or on Cedar Swamp, you know, on any other any of any other street, the board cannot take that into account. The board can only look at the ingress and egress from the site. Any traffic around the roundabout around the jug handle is not all right, well, they're talking the about 100 in the morning and 100, uh, 75 at night. Well, where are they plucking those numbers from, except from their hat? Because they don't know it's, who's going to be in there. It's really irrelevant for the board. So, so a, a couple of things. So um, when you have an application, when you have an application come before the board, you have, the board has jurisdiction to look at a sandbox. Right? In that sandbox is what happens inside of the property, right? the property line. You know, what happens is that uh, the board can't force an applicant to hire a traffic safety expert to do a, you know, a traffic impact study. Or, I understand. So, but just so um, that helps significantly when an applicant does that. Um, but that is primarily to make sure that the um, egress, um, ingress, the road width, the, the lights, everything is relevant to like a health safety welfare type standard where it's safe to come in and out of uh, if, if the applicant doesn't do that that's not the board doesn't have the input to rule on that right well i'm so, not talking about the board i'm no, not talking about the board I'm talking about the traffic study that the town engineer no i i understand that okay. so but what happens is that uh, let's say the town engineer a couple of years ago does a traffic impact study that somehow uh, is used within the master plan or something to that effect. Um, the only way you, that the board doesn't have the jurisdiction to pull that into somebody else's application and say, hey, look at this, this, this was a traffic impact study done by the township three roads away or on this highway or something like that, um, because that's not technically in the sandbox in the site. So, so the board has the jurisdiction to rule on what's in the sandbox. Um, you know, the circulation plan inside of the parking lot, the, the entries and entry and the exits, the ingress, egress, things to that nature. Um, they, they can't say, hey, look at the traffic two blocks away from here. You know, let's say you know, this may be wow. reasons to deny the application, because unfortunately, that's not what the municipal land use law says. So the municipal land use law gives the boards uh, the quasi it's called quasi judicial authority. What that means is that the state gives them the authority to, to operate like judges over a very specific narrow aspect of the law, which is planning board, which is land use. Um, this at least aspect of it, right? And within the jurisdiction that, that, the, that the state gives these people, 
uh, to act like judges. They, they can't take a look at three streets down and say, hey, there's a lot of traffic right there. Um, you know, this may be grounds for denial because when an application comes before the board, they have to comply with the ordinance. And if they do, um, then the board is warranted to grant the approval. It, it's um, picture it as a, as a matter of check boxes. And if you check all the boxes and go right down the row, the, the board has to consider and weigh those check boxes. Anything that's not on the checklist, they can't consider. Um, you know, so if if there had been a traffic safety expert, something to that effect here, that was you know talking about egress, ingress, um, the, the the width and depth of the turns coming to the property, I, I can see that. Um, but when you're referencing traffic is happening on, on different roads, whether it's, you know, With county. With due respect, you're beating a dead horse. I get it. Right. I'm just talking about okay. the right. traffic study that was done needs to be redone because it's not relevant. I understand. Yeah. Regardless of that, there's also, um, apparently there was a 2009 master plan mapped out by Jackson Land Use and Development Ordinance number, Chapter 244 whose intent of light manufacturing planning district to provide for the development of light industrial and corporate office development along the 195 corridor. Now, I was just made privy to this. I didn't know about it. But the objective is to encourage the development of industrial, warehouse, and office developments to encourage local tax rateables and employment opportunities. The master plan further describes the typical plant that would locate, be located in this district would be used using involved minor fabrication, assembly, distribution, operations, rather than manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And I see the word distribution in there. It is my understanding, unless the codes are wrong again, light manufacturing is not allowing distribution services. You cannot have a fulfillment center. You cannot have a distribution center. You can't have truck drivers sleeping there. You can't do any of those things. So this warehouse is supposed to be for storage of goods. A warehouse is the storage or accumulation of goods, whereas distribution centers are a specialized place in which goods or products are to be distributed to the resellers or wholesalers, and in some cases, directly to the customer. It's so you don't know who's in there. So you you are you are burying me, ma'am. Hold on a second. It's real theory. It is Excuse on your me. side and mine. Excuse me. Yeah, I, th I think. Respectfully, gone on for over fifteen minutes. You have a five minute limit. This is all theory. Yes. Can you tell us if you're building a distribution center, sir? We're not. Thank you. Thank you. So we're not building a distribution center. So that horse is out of the state. I, I will end it there. I agree. You've been calling it a warehouse. But if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Ma'am, it's a warehouse. Thank I'm you. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's a warehouse. I know it's a warehouse, but a warehouse and a distribution center Thank can you. be used the same way. Thank, Thank you, you for listening. Thank you. Hilton, would you like to come up? Please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear from the testimony information questions or comments you present before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Please say your name and spell your last name, your address, please. Uh, first name is Wiros, W I R O S. Last name is Jackson, J A K S A R N. Sorry. Um, do I have to respell my name? You got my name. Okay. Um, just so your address. Oh, I'm sorry. 365 West Commodore. I'm Thank in the R3 location as well. Um, I just want to. Quick question, is the, the warehouse climate controlled? Do we know is HVAC wise? From our understanding? I don't know the answer to that. I, it depends on who the tenant would be. Okay, so just for consideration for like light seat, that should stuff. Summertime, no climate control. It's not just the headlights we're considering. You gotta consider all the bay doors are gonna be open because it's gonna be hot. You know, in the winter time, you got the, the wall packs because it's gonna be dark. You got the red and blue lights for the dock levers to back up. So it's not just, I know we talked about the berms and stuff, but there's still other light backers, especially summertime. You're going to have all those doors open 24 hours with lights. Okay, so this board is not, I don't, I don't Yeah, just, it, just a consideration because I know meaning, we have to talk with heavy. Meaning, meaning any light spillage above the 
limits in the or ordinance they're going to comply with. Yes, so I'm if just, they put up any fixtures that's spill over, they're going to have to conform with. The yes, limit. I just want to consider those bay doors being open because nobody sometimes it gets overlooked, and we talk mostly about headlights. Um, and the only other comment I have, I know you guys can't consider traffic, talk about traffic, but my kids do go on the bus there on Commodore. The bus does stop there. I have two kids in elementary school, two kids in middle school, and one kid in high school. We get honked at a lot. There's lines of 12 people. I get my bus driver yelling at my kids saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, because um, there's a line and everybody's rushing to work. And that's around set between 7 and 8 o'clock. And I know you guys have no control over the traffic. Uh, one bit with a tractor trailer, straight trucks, wherever it is, but there are kids on that road getting on and off the bus. So that, that's all I wanted to say. I have no real, real and comment. sir, I would definitely suggest you go to a county commissioner meeting and bring that up to them because that's a county road. And perhaps the county commission can take that in consideration when they're budgeting for widening roads. Okay. I don't. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Forward. And his name is not Tilton. I apologize. That's the name of the business. He'll tell us what his I'll name call is. Mr. Tilton anyway. <laughs> I, I did too. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony, information, questions, or comments you present will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you. Please state your name, spell your last, and your address, please. Uh, name's Tim Sculthorpe, T I M S C U L T H O R P E, 360 West Commodore Boulevard, uh, next door to property. And your your what's your affiliation with Hilton or the uh, my family? Okay, the property and the business. Yes, you heard I placed on the record at the beginning of the hearing that we agreed to relocate the improvements you have within the right of way and put them onto your property at your request. Correct. And you have no issue, and you would give the applicant authority to make those improvements and put them on your property. Yeah, as long as whatever is moved is just made right. You know, that's my concern. It's right. So, well, we're very. Can we just establish that he's. He's allowed to speak on behalf of the business. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, my concern is, is no, just they that. want to know if you have authority to speak on behalf of the property owner, business owner. Yes, I do. She sent me her door. She being your mother? Yes. Okay. And your mother is the owner of the business? Yes. Yes, Thank sir. You. So my concern is, is just that whatever is, is disturbed is this made whole. That's really my concern. And we had a discussion outside, kind of get yelled at for being loud. But, uh, that was our discussion out back. Uh, that just whatever is changed in the the easement, that uh, they'll just you know correct it and uh, right. And we're talking about that you have improvements that are actually in the county right of way that we're going to yes, move sir. onto your property. That's yes, what sir. we're talking about. Yep. Yes, it's decorative block. That was, that's the only thing that my concern was. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Seeing no other members of the public coming forward, make a motion to close public comment at this time. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. So, Ferry, would you like to make closing comments? Yes. Um, we'd request that the board take two separate actions so that we don't get bogged down with dissatisfaction with one or the other. First would be that we get we, we receive preliminary final amended site plan approval for the consolidated building. All of the conditions that we testified to would would um, be included in the resolution. It is a variance-free application. No relief of any kind is required. Um, that would be the first request. And then the second request is the uh, removal of the limitation of the hours of operation from the prior approval. Yeah. Yeah. Just to confirm that, is that going for building three as well, the prior approval for times? With the current standing, it's not building three, but the entire property. The entire property. Do our professionals have any comments on that, please? Yes, I just have a couple quick things. One, I heard some commentary or testimony earlier about the 21 bays or trucks. I just wanted to confirm that, or you could be part of the resolution that there would only be 21 trucks allowed, um, or if there was additional commentary uh, if the bay question I'm, I'm not a trucking industry fellow but if a bay is two trucks and it's actually 42 trucks and this is just an illustration and the actual number is double or, or whatever the actual number is uh, if the testimony was accurate then i would assume there's no issue with 
uh, having it limited to 21 trucks as specifically on the, on the, on, that's item number one. Mm -hmm. um, and item number two is I'm not aware of any obligation to do 24 hours. So it is true that we have to do, um, you know, the outside external traffic is not our concern. Scratch that. It's not at our jurisdiction. We have heard commentary about children getting on, um, on the bus. We have had commentary from residences, not fellow businesses and the impacts. Um, I think the planning board in good faith uh, gave the hours of operation. I think it was 9 to 11 p.m. or whatever those previous hours are. If it's conforming, the conformance, I don't think has anything to do with 24 hours. So I don't want anybody to be confused unless I'm wrong. So as far as putting the, you know, consolidating it, it's a little bigger. It's not really consolidating. It's consolidation plus. But as far as changing the hours of operation, I don't, there's nothing compelling to me to do that. Um, so that may speak to the issue of the children and the buses. That may also speak to the lights and the, the, the overnight piece. Um, there's nothing compelling. So I uh, just I'll ask the attorney, is there something that compels us to do 24 hours? Because I don't see any anything based on what I heard from the public. There's nothing compelling to do that. And and then and then the other first question about the 21 trucks versus is it a bay and that they're that a bay holds multiple vehicles on that Bobby, yeah, regular. either yeah. one. I think you were part of the first go round of this application, Mr. Wall, as well as I was. And I can remember Mr. Kudak beating on this about the traffic and whatnot, and it was down to the two shifts or the what we have. And that, that was an arduous battle between, you know, the testimony from well, the neighbors on the first go round. And, and I don't see a reason that that should shift. It was already put on the record. It was solidified. It was good then. Now it's a greater reach. It's, yeah, to me, I, I, I'm not fond of backs. Get the first approval and come back later for a smaller ask. I, I just don't like them philosophically. We put in all the time, put in all the hours, everything in good faith, and then it's a be back. So, I, but right. on the application itself, unless it's compelling, uh, is there something that drives us from a legal standpoint to give 24 hours? If not, then it's not very uh, impressive to me. And I also just wanted to understand if it is in fact 21 trucks, or is there something I'm not aware of as far as the industry is bays and it's 42 trucks or some other amount? Because if it's not, then I'm sure the applicant wouldn't be opposed to it being limited to 21 trucks. Well, As, it, which is would what the, the, the applicant be opposed to 21 trucks? Just waiting for Mr. Borden to look at his plans to make sure that there's no confusion for we respond. Mr. Fleming, Mr. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with Mr. Wall. I, I'm very uncomfortable with applicants that are that are getting an application and then using that application as a stepping stone for the next application on the same piece of property. And this is a, a case in point for it. They got an approval. They got an approval with stipulations. Now they come back at us with changes and trying to do away with the stipulations. And yes, it was a hard fought contest last time we did this. And we did curtail it to the two because of the R3 and, and the impact it was going to have on that. Now they're coming back and, and just trying to make that extra step. And I, I'm very, very uncomfortable with that. All right. Yeah, we got it. We got it number of things at play right now. So um, what I would request, because there's a lot of confusion going on, either we do one of two things, um, the, the board do one of two things. First, um, determine whether or not the board wants to carry this so we get some kind of clarity as to what exactly is being requested, what's not being requested, what, what the, the applicant's willing to do, what the applicant's not willing to do, or number two, the board makes some kind of decision by way of vote right now as to whether or not uh, you guys agree that a condition of approval is going to be for the 21 trucks and 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 a separate vote as to whether or not uh, the the condition of approval in the prior resolution is going to be um, revised to 24 hours. I think they're, they're two different things and I don't want to see I, the, um, so before before I, we really go there let's how about we just how about we make one motion on the site plan if anyone well like just to, to make something clear we have to consider the other building too correct it's already in existence well we're not talking about we're going to vote on the 24 hours after I think yeah. that, that was what Mr. Alferi asked for I think that makes sense well, the, we, but that also man, controls the first building the one that's been damaged if we're that's discussing, on the same site if we're discussing the timing 
Professor, uh, maybe first, if, if someone would like to make a motion. Well, wait, before, before you, oh, I just wanted to make a point. It's 21 bays in the new building and 11 in the existing building. Correct. So if we were going to limit it, it would have to be 32. All right. Before well, we get to be clear, I'm not confused. I'm asking questions. I'm looking for answers right. and guidance on the law on the 24 hours specifically, because it's, I don't think that, I don't think, I think we had this application before. So just with all due respect, there's no confusion. But they already have an approval that they agreed to right. yeah. mm -hmm. by resolution that curtailed it. So we don't need to change that. We don't need to back off of that. We already agreed to that. And they agreed to that by resolution. Right. So, so that, that would be an independent vote by the board. So, so you would have to actually vote to revise the, the, the condition of approval, the prior resolution, as an independent um, condition in the, of itself. I mean, you guys can vote as to the preliminary and final, but... You also can do your own vote as to the operational aspect of it, which they're already bound by. Um, I mean, do, do, what are the board professionals? Uh, uh, before, before we go there, the proper term is dock positions. We're not counting trucks, we're counting dock positions. We would assume when we build these that one truck goes into the dock, you could have four in one day or whatever. So we don't have ambiguity on a resolution potentially if we get to that point. Dock positions are the terms that I would like to use. If you would agree, Mr. Alfieri, it's it's much clearer. And and it would the 21 is relating to the new building, not the existing building. That's separate, and they have additional bay uh, docks. I would, I would agree with you, sir. Right. But Mr. You, Mr. Peters, is there something we're missing before we? Yeah, architects' plans. That's what we th we're afraid of, so, Mr. Chair. But if if I might. The previous application for the loading docks were wide enough to handle two vehicles. Clearly indicated in our report. It's clearly indicated in the application submission they made. It's just on page 70 something. Each of the loading docks is wide enough for two trailers. Traffic report followed that. So unfortunately now without new architects plans for this combined building, and I'm not sure if Mr. Borden knows more than we, we don't have revised architect plans. So the idea that there's 21 units, is that just 21 trucks or is it 21 docks that are wide enough for two trailers each? We don't have that answer before us. They may know it, but it yeah. wasn't submitted to this board for review. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to. Is that clear? I, I'm, I'm going to request. Um, I mean, I, listen, you guys have the authority to do this. My legal recommendation would be for the applicant to come back with some kind of more specific as is to exactly what is happening, exactly what you're requesting. Uh, with that being said, it's up to the determination of the board um, to move forward. What well, you know. and, and in response, that's why I asked Mr. Peters to give his opinion, because unfortunately, we don't have that architectural plan. And that's where the confusion may be. And before we commit and make a formal representation to this board as to the 21 docs, we want to make sure it's accurate and all the plans are consistent with that. So, so we have no issue carrying it to straighten that out. So your, your testimony before that there'll be 21 trucks. We're going to fall off. Well, there's 21 loading bays, if you will. But the question raised is, can two trucks park in there and we simultaneously load and that would be we get we have to make sure we're accurate and Chair, my question was in plain english and it was answered as 21 trucks I heard so that. okay and i think the recorded testimony shows it was a plain english question and mm -hmm. i was given a plain english answer and now this piece is unwinding because there's confusion about what was given in plain english I don't care for that in any application, and I'm stating that on the record, and this has occurred before. Don't appreciate it. We're volunteers. We're not forensic volunteers. And in addition, you know, I would like to see some a site engineer by the next hearing to be able to testify to some of the questions that were brought up. You know, architect and a site engineer to, you know, some of the spillage questions, noise questions. Sorry, we closed public comment already, but. No, I think they're they have what they need. Thank, thank you. No, 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 they. I think they have what they need. Thank you, ma'am. Ma if you have additional documentation you want to give to the board, you you can uh, mail it or drop it off to the board secretary tomorrow. 
anything after that prior to um, the next hearing date. Yes. Mr. Alfieri, can we find out if, what marketing they're doing? I'm sure they have been. I'll ask doing the client. Yeah. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, hey, just for clarification, they'll be coming back with information on this new building and the existing building or just the new building? We, well, well, I believe just the new just building. the new building, but we'll 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 know um, we'll be able to answer your questions about the existing building because it's already designed and it almost completed before the tor the tornado. Okay, thank you. No, just to clarify, did you want to have a separate vote tonight on twenty four hours and get that out of the way? Or I mean, wait, if the board would like to vote on the twenty four hours for the commit, I vote to make. I would make a motion to no, keep the hours the same. There's no vote. That's that's fair point. Again, they asked, do we have it's, to vote? All right, yeah. So, so if if they ask for it in the application, the board is mandated to to make a right. vote on it. For better or worse, doesn't matter. But if they make the application, if they make the request, we can have to vote on it. Um, if We're gonna if carry that's it. what the board is going to do, then. Um, then you correct. We're going to carry the. Uh, does how does August twenty first sound? September eighteenth. I believe October sixteenth. You have another application on Bennett's Mills Realty. August twenty first works for. Did you was that one of the August offers? Twenty first. Yeah. Is that good. We. Um, well, I believe oh, that, not over here. I believe that we have an opening on June uh, 19th. If that we, we won't, <laughs> no, it's too, we days. won't be ready. Well, it, it's yeah. I'm sorry. So we already have three for August 21st. So if you're, I believe you're here on October 16th anyway. Yeah, but um, you have any problem when you can take Yeah, I don't have the list of the applications in front of me. So. Nor do I. Um, we'll take, I, I'm sure the client would rather have it sooner rather than later. So we could take October 2nd if it's open. I'm, I'm never home anyway, so it doesn't matter to me if I'm out here or not. Okay. We have time until... October we'll give the board an extension to act through the end of October um, of this year, and we'd request that the board announce that it's carried to October 2nd without the need for further public notice. Shay, would you like to announce that? Um, I, I would, based upon all the issues that we're dealing with, I would request that you notice for this one. Re-notice. Re That's fine. Thank do I need a motion to carry it? I'd like to make a motion to carry it to October 2nd. October 2nd. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone like to close? close? Make a motion to close? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.